I'm going to go ahead and uh, start doing a few things here. So, um, yeah, so I'm not still not 100 percent. So I might have to keep things a little bit short today. Um, I'm also quite a bit behind, so I don't know if, if anybody's been uh, trying to get me with email or something. Uh, I'm sorry, I might not have seen stuff yet. So, uh, I mean, for you guys who are here, I mean, definitely feel free to uh, uh, come by after I finish up here if you, if you have something that you need to ask about. So. Um, my plan was, uh, and, and yeah, the biggest thing is I really wanted to get the uh, evaluations uh, back on assignment three. I've only gotten, I've really only gotten started on them. Uh, I've gotten a few people, but not very many yet. Um, um, I'll try and get those. I definitely want to get those before uh, we start the test on Thursday. So I'll do something to get uh, through all those before uh, Thursday here. Uh, but I did uh, post uh, probably the main thing I'll do today. Uh, I, I'll just go through that, the, the assignment three regression. There are some things though that I think are useful for a lot of, well, uh, for, for some students um, from the observations that I've had so far, from the ones I've looked at. Uh, plus, it, it's a, a jumping off point for talking about some stuff to review, some stuff to be familiar with for the, uh, the midterm tests. Um, for, yet, for, for you four that are here, I don't know if, if you have any, any questions about the um, uh, test format or anything, let me know. Um, I can try and answer some more. Um, I'll, I'll probably bring that up again at the end here uh, if we have some more people uh, in. So I haven't really finished uh, that yet either, so I have to do that. Um, but my plan still is to open it up probably Thursday after our class. So I'll give one final chance for people to uh, uh, come and ask questions on Thursday about format or about content or stuff. So, um, although Thursday might be relatively short, so uh, so I might just open it up for uh, 15, 30 minutes or so, do a little review, see if there's any questions, and uh, if not, just go ahead and uh, open up the test and uh, let you guys get going on it. So, But that's my plan. Um, like I mentioned before, I don't think it'll be too difficult for most people. It's, it's not meant to be. It is, it is time that'll add a little bit of pressure, but it'll be pretty similar to the stuff you've done on the first three assignments uh, in terms of uh, writing some stuff in an iPython notebook to implement a function or do a regression or a classification and uh, report some stuff on your fit, that kind of thing. All right. Anyway, so yeah, any any burning questions on test format or anything? If not, um, yeah, like I said, um, I'll probably focus most of the time. I'll, I'll do a little bit of review of this assignment three, even though I don't have it back to everybody yet. Uh, there, this these are posted. Um, I encourage you to go and look at it. Um, I'll bring up some of the points that I wanted people to. Uh, to, to get out of the assignment uh, here as we talk about it. Uh, but, but yeah, you can, should be able to pull this down yourself and, and look at it. There's more details on, on, um, uh, on a lot of stuff uh, in this um, example solution discussion here if you haven't looked at it yet. So. Um, Let me first, first just uh, point out that uh, there is uh, the, the full function that was actually used to generate the data that you were trying to fit on this assignment is there. So um, it was a what? It was a degree six polynomial with uh, these values for the parameters. So we actually zeroed out some of them. The, 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 the quadratic and the fifth power uh, weren't in there. Uh, and everything else was just fairly simple one or two or negative uh, adding or subtracting um, that that uh, uh, polynomial in there right so anyway if you have this though you can do stuff I'll, I'll, I'll skip ahead here but um, you could go back and look at your own fit and compare your model fit to what the true function was and get a better idea of how you did on in terms of the alpha that you used for regularization or other things uh, when you were fitting the data here Um, and also, like I said, I apologize. I'm still not 100%. My voice might go, so I don't know if I'll be able to go how long here. Um, so, 
so yeah, let's jump to it. Um, from the from the couple that I've gotten through so far, um, I don't think I had uh, any problems uh, with your first task one. Uh, everybody is is seems like has has figured out loading the data correctly from the relative path name, uh, and well, I shouldn't say everybody since I haven't. I haven't um, looked at a lot of people yet, but the ones I've looked at, um, uh, uh, we're getting at load and, and we're plotting fine, you know. So um, you should have got a plot like this um, um, if you had that first one working. So our data look like this. It's actually a degree six polynomial, uh, but it doesn't wiggle too much, at least over the range from negative one to one here. Um, uh, and the noise, um, I skipped over it, but we were using what? Um, um, a noise of about 0 0.05 uh, uh, deviation from the mean, right? So uh, it'll be uh, about plus or minus 0 0.05 uh, in usual, right? So it's, it's not too noisy. I mean, um, you know, from a visual a visual inspection of this, you should pretty much really know what the true function probably needs to look like if you fit a good model on this. Um, and you could probably guess that, you know, I mean, definitely a linear model or uh, a simple quadratic is not a real good fit. You know, a power two parabola, you need something uh, at least a little bit higher degree than that, uh, at least to get in some of the stuff around here, especially. Um, um, okay. Okay. So I didn't uh, like really specify, but you know it would have been good to at least um, you know uh, uh, if if you were complete when you first started this assignment to you know use the basic functions to look at what the data looks like, uh, and definitely you know figure out how many you know what your sample number of samples were and kind of what the range looked like for these values your your, your uh, inputs and the uh, the regression labels that we were trying to fit that kind of stuff so um, all right so you know the purpose of the, the task two through six was to try and lead you through the process of you know thinking about uh, for a unknown data set, how would you go about tuning a model to get a better fit, right? So you don't know the exact form of this function that you're trying to fit the data to, right? So the, the, the typical task um, is, is going to be similar to this process. So uh, it's a good idea to start with an underfit model. This gives you some information. Um, so in this case, I ask you to do a degree two model, which the ones I've looked at so far, everybody did that right, um, and we're passing the tests. Um, for a degree two model, um, you should have gotten exactly these intercept and coefficients. Uh, you end up with a, a RMSE of uh, 0.31 here. So that's the main information that we can get for this underfit model, um, 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 along with the learning curve. So, so one of these is that the uh, fit we get over all the data uh, is around a 0.31 level, but we know this is probably underfitting, so we would expect we should be able to do better than this for a well-fit model, for, for something that's well-tuned, right? So that, that, this gives it an upper bound, right? So, so really, I, I was trying to lead you through on this assignment, You're, you need, needed to try and bound your function here, right? So, so here we've got something that, that uh, we should be able to do better than that. Um, um, so our next step is we kind of want to get it like maybe a lower bone, um, something that, that is probably better than we can hope for. But um, um, I did have, I'm probably going to have this as a general comment for a lot of people because I had it for, uh, for a couple of the people already of the, of the four or five that I've gotten through uh, so far. Um, I don't think people still completely understand the purpose of the learning curves, you know, why we plot them. Um, so the, my most common complaint is um, um, you often, you usually do have to uh, change your limits on these learning curves here. Uh, in fact, um, I wanted to step through this notebook one by one. So let me, um, 
Uh, let me go ahead and rerun this. Uh, So like here, let me just replot these, but let's not specify any limit. A lot of people were doing a limit, but they weren't really uh, specifying something. So the, the purpose of the learning curve is there's, there's some information that we can uh, gain from visualizing this. So some, some questions we can ask is, does it converge or not? So we can kind of see that from here. I mean, it does look like it converges. Although, you know, it's tough to see because if you don't change the limit, uh, we have some errors that are really large here, um, and it, it just squashes, and we can't really get the information that we need uh, in this, uh, the fig from the figure here uh, without doing some manipulations on our limit. Okay? Uh, but it does seem to converge maybe by, uh, you know, a train using at least around 10 points or more, right? But we can't really see where it converges, right? I, I, we kind of know that, that it, um, it, it's probably around 0.31, right? But, but we would like to visualize that. So for the underfit model, um, so, you know, I had a lot of people not doing that, right? So, so the, the useful thing here for the other fit model is to kind of to know the range and where uh, the, the the train and the test error end up at and when they end up at those values. Right. So, so again, remember because it's underfit, we expect that it's performing bad. Uh, you know, we're hoping that we have an underfit model here, so we expect it should perform bad. So this should give us kind of an upper bound, right? Uh, but it, it does look like it's converging. So, you know, we should expect a good fit model. We should be able to, to get it to converge using 10 or 20 data points, like we showed here with the uh, underfit model. Uh, and we, we hope that we can get good fitting models to give us much better performance um, on our uh, fitness function than 0.3. So 0.3 is kind of an upper level of bound here. Right? So, you know, if, if you don't manipulate the limits, uh, it's, you can't see that, you can't get that kind of information uh, sometimes at all, or at least not as well, right? So, so anyway, I mean, that's the, the, the main purpose of the, the learning curves and visualizing like this is there's certain things that we can learn about the model, about the data that we're trying to fit here. So yeah, a proper limit on this one for the first underfit model is probably like 0.5 because that gives you a pretty clear uh, of where we're, what level we're converging at both for the training and test and, and how fast they're getting there um, uh, in terms of the number of points we need before uh, we get our testing data back in about the same range as, the, as what performance we get on the training data here. Um, until I gave you the, the true function, but you know, for the underfit model, degree two, the best parabola is like right through there, um, and you can. Uh, so if you know, so for real data in the real world, you'd never be able to do something like this. But for practice, for understanding how machine learning works, it's useful to kind of compare. You know, what is my underfit model doing, uh, and, and what is it? doing compared to the true function that we're really trying to fit here, right? Um, so that, that's what, you know, our degree two would be a parameter like that, and that's the best that we can do using only uh, the intercept um, and degree one and degree two uh, powers uh, of a function for the data that we have here, right? So it, it over predicts on a bit of a range and under predicts a lot for um, some other parts here. Um, all right, uh, and then so kind of the second step in this process is you know we, we want to bound um, the what's possible uh, given the data for the what might be possible 
uh, of, of the model we can fit to it. Right? So to get a, a lower bound, uh, overfitting a model um, to the data is a good idea. Right? So that's what we're doing on the second step here. Um, so again, you know, um, my big kind of complaint for a lot of people. Uh, some, you know, uh, you should also, you know, uh, I should, uh, before I move on here, don't skip over things here. Um, so for example, you know, pay attention to everything that we were using here. So, you know, uh, make note of the size of the coefficients that we end up with for a degree two model. So they're all kind of reasonable. They're not like really zero or, or really big values here, right? Which we'd expect, we, we would expect reasonable values for a good model or um, uh, an underfit model. Uh, we expect more wonky values when we're overfitting. By wonky, I mean things that are clearly really, really large or, um, um, or, or don't seem reasonable. Um, also, I haven't really talked a lot about R squared. I meant to do more about that, but um, I, I, uh, for, uh, for the students that are here, um, I'll, I'll say that so R squared is used a lot in statistics um, as a measure of how well uh, a regression is fitting. But um, as you know, if you paid attention to it uh, in this assignment, you'll see that it doesn't really help you at all to determine uh, uh, overfitting or underfitting. So R squared will give you very high values uh, for a good model, but it'll also give you very high R squared models for, for R squared values for overfit model. So, but it can tell you a little bit, right? So uh, uh, 0.77, again, that's an upper bound. So we would hope that we can um, get models that uh, would get, perform much better on this R squared measure if they're fitting well. Better than 0.77. Um, so I went off on a tangent because you know. Uh, so let's look at for our overfit model. You know, don't skip over the coefficients and the intercepts um, and the RMSE and the R squared. Uh, these would have all been good things to use as observations on the. the we're actually going to discuss a little bit. Right, so typically, uh, for whatever value for your overfit model here, uh, well, uh, there's only one overfit model. I didn't ask you to regularize or anything. So you really should have gotten the same overfit model. Um, uh, but you know, for one thing, you know, these parameters, you get some really extreme ones. 10 to the 10, 10 to the 11th power, so really large values uh, in most all of these uh, parameters. Um, uh, for the, the overfit uh, model here. Um, but um, so you know, we're, we're trying to balance, but probably the most important thing was the, uh, uh, the RMSE that we get here. Right? Uh, hey, at least one person of the ones I've already looked at, though, seemed to kind of miss. You know, so, so the, the previous one was 0.3 something. This is 0 0.03. So this is 10 times smaller. You know, this, this, this was a much lower uh, uh, fitness, a much better fitness than we had, had for the overfit model. So, um, <clears throat> um, and you know, so the R squared is almost perfect, 0.99, which, you know, um, Again, that, that's the, the base, big caveat. If somebody's reporting an R squared score for you, you know, you should, ask, you should immediately ask, you know, if, if, if they're saying, you know, my, my, um, my fit is almost perfect, you should be saying, well, you know, are you overfitting? Does your model actually generalize to, to new data or is it just fitting the noise, right? So anytime I see high R squared, I'm suspicious about that. So. Um, And again, you really can't if you don't if you don't play with your if you, if you don't uh, set your limits. Uh, your visualization is going to give you no information here. Uh, I mean, you know, we 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 displayed what the RMSE, which is really the only information you can get here. Well, not that's not true. I mean, you you could kind of if you just plot it like this. I mean, 
does it seem like it's converging? What happened here? I mean, it's not really. It's just this is so big again. It squashes down. You can't get the information you need from this visualization if you don't um, change your y limit, right? So this is really the information that you need. Is that it really never converges? The 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 um, uh, the, the performance we're getting on our test data is always really really much bigger, much bigger gap than uh, we get on the training data. So that's indicative of overfitting, right? So, so you really never see convergence. And the other thing is, is you know, with the appropriate limit, though you can see that uh, on our test data we get a, a nice, well, we get a really small, um, although, you know, it creeps up a little bit. So it, it, it's pretty much like zero for a long time, which again, we should expect for overfitting. Um, uh, finally, once we get more than 40 or 50 points, uh, we're getting a little bit of, of, um, uh, of, of error um, coming in the equation there. So, all right? So again, you know, uh, the, 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 there, there's a couple of things you can get from learning curves like this, all right? So uh, if the training test data are not converging, that's telling you something. It's telling you probably overfitting. Um, where the level that the train, the test end up at, where, where it comes down to on your learning curve, uh, might be telling you something. Um, if the uh, error is going up or going down when you stop, that might be telling you something. If, if, it, if, it, don't, if it doesn't seem to have stopped either falling or, or rising, uh, you might not have done enough. Um, so in that case, like if you're using gradient descent, you might want to train for more epochs to see if it ever does um, of, uh, converge or level out at some level. Right. Um, so for the overfit here, probably the biggest thing is, yeah, this confirms it overfits, um, and this probably gives us a lower bound. So maybe a well-fit model can approach that 0 0.03, 0 0.04 uh, fitness uh, and not be overfitting, still do well on, on um, predicting um, unseen data. Um, okay. So, so reference, in, 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 again, you know, you couldn't do this until I gave you the, the secret function that was generating stuff, uh, but you can see, you know, the, the truth. Of course, you could have plotted your uh, overfit function. I didn't ask you to do that, uh, but but you know, again, a visualization that this shows obviously um, it's it's trying to wiggle through and hit uh, data points. So it's it's fitting a lot of the the noise in the data, overfitting. So, right. so we get that typical kind of thing, especially on the ends for polynomial function like this, where it's going to be doing especially bad and getting big errors on data it hasn't seen before. Um, all right, so that was the underfit and the overfit. Um, um, I should have maybe written down some things. Like, for example, for my underfit model, I end up with an RMSE fitness function of about 0.31, uh, an R squared of 0.77, um, and it went down to um, went down to a very small 0.03 for the overfit model. Um, getting a pretty close to a perfect um, R squared uh, fit there. Um, this is just uh, a subtle thing. I, 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 I should probably add this on to the assignment if I do this uh, in the future. Um, I think most people are, at least I've done it so far, are doing it the way I show here, 
I don't know if I was clear about this. So, so I'm showing here the RMSE and the R squared where we get the scores over all the data. Um, so the model that, that I have here where I got the data from uh, was only fit on 80 of the points, but we I recalculate the score uh, overall over using all the data. So, you know, that may or may not be, I mean, since we fit with 80% of the data, uh, these scores are more like um, my, my score for the, uh, that I'm going to get with the data I trained with, um, although we are using some points that we didn't train with. Right? It, it, it might have been better to uh, have you explicitly use the, uh, say, the final um, RMSE that you had from on the uh, test data would have really actually been better here than reporting um, uh, like the score over all the data. Um, so, but it probably doesn't change too much what you would have seen or would, would have uh, gotten as results uh, for the assignment here. Um, okay, anyway, so The regularization is um, uh, an easy thing to do um, if we're trying to tune a machine learning model to, to try and improve performance, right? Uh, although one thing that maybe this assignment uh, demonstrates is it's a little bit of a brute force uh, tool that you have. Um, so you can't often get the very best model just from regularization, using regularization. You have to resort to doing other things uh, potentially. Um, but uh, but but it's it's always a good thing to to, to start with, right? So uh, on the journey, uh, if I'm trying to get a well-performing model, um, uh, I can start by trying to uh, uh, bound. Uh, my expectations of what I can maybe get, uh, and then use regularization, right? So the the the, um, um, the goal of, of regularizing using L1 or L2 um, would be I want something that's that I can uh, show is not overfitting, um, but st in, but still getting performance close to what we got on that overfit, the point zero three. Um, on unseen data, um, on uh, data it wasn't trained with. Right? And there's some other things as well that, that we can look at that are a little bit more specific to like this kind of polynomial regression, um, which a lot of people that I've looked at so far were doing that, uh, looking at which parameters got driven to zero depending on what values of alpha, how much or how little regularization you were using. Yeah. Um, So, um, um, so I, what I wanted people to do a little bit was to try and uh, bound by hand uh, good values of alpha so that you had an alpha using lasso regularization that seemed to be still overfitting so it wasn't, um, uh, it wasn't enough regularization, it's probably too small, too small of an alpha. Uh, or then find maybe some alphas that uh, um, uh, seem to be underfitting, so maybe it was um, too much. Got that backwards, don't I? Um, but but values of alpha that, that seem to still be underfitting versus overfitting versus uh, something maybe in between that might be uh, 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 fitting well uh, for the data there. Okay. Um, So in this first example here, um, I'm giving an example using 0 .005 for my regularization. So um, uh, for my first one, here's, I'll, I'll just keep track of these. So when we have uh, 0 .0005, uh, a lot of the ones I've looked at so far, people were, were not given really great ranges on these. 
So we're like just trying zero, one, and two, uh, where the, the interesting stuff was happening not at zero, but certainly much smaller than one. So, um, so for like uh, 0 0.005, um, we get something, or you should have gotten something that looks something like this. So a couple things we can see. Um, um, let's let's get both of these. So uh, we end up with an RMSE of 0.12. Um, and uh, R squared of uh, okay, I six something. Right. So I don't know. I mean, you know, it's definitely a lot bigger than the point zero three, uh, but it's definitely a lot better than the other fit, so, you know, that's kind of a good sign. It's in between there somewhere um, uh, to our kind of bounds that we had when we were talking about looking at the underfit and the overfit models. Right? Uh, but there's some other things that, you know, for example, you could have looked at, uh, you might have wanted to see how, which, how many parameters get pushed to zero case, you know, I have approximately, uh, I didn't ask you to put this in your table, but we had uh, approximately, uh, how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 18, 19, 20 um, non-zero parameters, so about 80 or so uh, get pushed to zero um, for that value of alpha, right? Uh, That was uh, that. I mean, that was probably um, a relatively good guess if you're going by hand of what uh, an alpha that might work well with lasso is, right? Although, if you look at the learning curves, you know, it does converge. Um, um, although, uh, there there might be somewhere it was still going down here. Um, so it took a little bit of a while, although I'm not, it's not clear whether that's true or not, right? But it definitely does seem, you know, um, um, uh, we are converging here. So we're getting similar performance on the train, the test data, and our performance uh, is much better than we had with the underfit model, right? So it's much lower than the 0.3, right? Although it doesn't get down to that 0.05 or, or so, right? In fact, um, um, I mean, this was just the, the, the way this data was. It's, it's, I don't think it's possible to get much better than 0 0.12, 0 0.11 uh, uh, for different alphas using lasso here for whatever reasons. So that's about as good as you get, at least for the RMSE, right? But you can get other information. Uh, like, for example, you can see how it affects, well, well let's, let's, um, let's make it bigger, right? So let's make it something obviously uh, way too big. Um, like, like 0 0.1, I think. So at 0 0.1, um, notice that uh, we get uh, RMSE of 0 0.51, so even uh, worse than we had for the underfit, um, right? Um, so uh, this is obviously too much regularization. So basically, if I have to plot this, this is what it looks like, right? Uh, oops. Um, so since I'm using so much regularization, I'm driving it back to a straight line. All right, so this is really an alpha point one here. Right? So so I end up with two like a well a straight line or a um, 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 
a power two, right? And you, you can see that from looking at which things got driven to zero. But I only end up with uh, three parameters, including the bias. So it's really a uh, quadratic function. So this model is badly underfitting. Value point one is, is underfit. It has some similarities to uh, the, the underfit results. Uh, um, so this data wasn't really great on, on the other end because uh, you, you could keep getting really close to zero and not get much change. Um, and you really can't use an alpha of zero well for lasso or the other one or both of them. So let me, let me just try. So yeah, like if you use zero, I mean, of, of course, effectively zero uh, should be that we're not doing any regularization. So this is just uh, the same as doing um, an overfit degree 100 should be equivalent to the overfit model that we had before. With this performance here, um, except I can't remember, but um, you may or may not be able to run it with zero. Um, well. But yeah, so in that case, though, um, it, it, it's I think I've mentioned this before, so I mean it really is doing, even though it's zero, you're not getting exactly the same result, I, and I don't know why I haven't gone and investigated this. So, you know, the, the, the most obvious thing is that we don't get those really wildly large values for all of the uh, coefficients like we do for just the overfit regressions. I don't know exactly what happens um, there, but uh, we do get like um, um, a similar point one two and um, I, I mean, we're actually getting a similar to the, the point zero zero five here, uh, even though we specify there's there's no alpha, so it should have been more like the overfit model. And But yeah, I mean, you can see that here. So, so again, ignore my label there. I should change that to be dynamic. But this is really supposedly with an alpha of zero, but it doesn't have that overfit like we did before. Um, anyway. Um, um, so you may or may not have seen those, but uh, that's what I was getting for this data here. Uh, but I don't really trust this for zero, you know, so it's, something's happening. It's not really converging. Uh, but, but, yeah, what we do get is what? Um, um, supposedly we're also, also getting the point one two, kind of like this point zero zero five. Um, and, uh, Although, uh, yeah, notice, I mean, it is a little bit different, right, because um, we don't end up driving anything to zero. They're all kind of small, but nothing to zero um, as a result here. So uh, it's a little bit different than when we had at least a little bit. Here. Anyway, that's kind of why I'm getting with that when I run this stuff. Um, so let me change this back to... Um, Maybe try one more, a little bit bigger than what I had in there before. So it's like zero, 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 one, or, or two, zero, one, I mean. Right, so about twice as big as the first one that I showed there. So with it, at least a little bit, the, the um, you know, the convergent, convergence works. You don't get the errors. Uh, or the warning messages, um, and and uh, yeah, and, and you will get some estimates of um, uh, of what the polynomial might be. Right? So again, this is looking like about twenty or so uh, parameters that it kept. Uh, 
Um, So anyway, if you're doing stuff like that, though, it should be kind of... if we're going to use just the lasso uh, regression here. So. Um, all right. So similar, I won't, maybe I won't spend as much time on the ridge. Ridge is doing the L2 uh, type of regularization. Um, so let me see here. So by default, I'm using 0 0.01 as kind of a good value for ridge. Um, So what you should have typically seen, um, it, was e it should be easy to find values on ridge. So uh, it, it, it will end up using all of the features. So it won't drive any of them to zero, but it'll put a lot of them you know, uh, close to zero, well, uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, something like that. It'll keep all of them. But uh, interestingly enough, and again, I don't know if I have a complete explanation for this, but it's much easier to get things down, uh, models that are not underfitting or overfitting. Uh, using Ridge that, that get RMSEs much better than what you can typically get with the lasso for the set of data that I have. So down to point zero four, you know, approaching that, that lower bound that I was talking about that we were seeing on the overfit model here. Right. So that, that's what we got for, for this one. We got the uh, uh, point zero four. Uh, basically a nine nine. Although you know, right, we should be suspicious whether this is overfitting or not. Um, still, um, but um, again, it's, it's tough to get something that's overfitting uh, because uh, even getting really close down to zero still seems to get about the same kind of model uh, like this that I just had for the point zero one here. So, um, so if you plot your learning curves for that data, uh, I mean, it it it. Uh, uh, takes till maybe about 20 before it converges, but it seems like it's maybe converged. Um, uh, you don't have too big of a gap uh, between these here. Um, and again, I mean, you know, you couldn't do this with the true function, but, you know, if you plotted the function that you were getting uh, with like an alpha 0.01, you know, uh, it wouldn't obviously look, you know, really overfit wiggly kind of thing so it would look much smoother which might lead you to believe it's not doing too bad and it's it, it, it uh, so notice from that that RMSE that we got 0 0.04 you know except for some of the extreme parts here it's, it's not bad uh, on fitting that true function that we had uh, that, that we were trying to model here so. Um, so in this case you know again uh, I think 0.1 isn't all that bad but like if you do 0.5 or something on your ridge, so point five. Um, although you still get a better um, um, RMSE than we had for the best lassos, uh, but it is, it's definitely uh, you know it's like more than twice as big as what we had for the point zero one there. Right? Um, but uh, here is maybe an example of um, 
So 8.5 uh, uh, might be okay. It's just that in the amount of data that we had to train with, um, it still hadn't reached the best level that it could, right? So I don't think it had really converged yet. If we had a bigger data set, it would have continued pushing down uh, and, and got, being able to get close to what we have with point zero one. So, so this gives you faster down to the, the performance that we can get uh, uh, from this data set uh, than the point five does, right? So again, we're not obviously um, 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 underfitting uh, still, so I should maybe make the value bigger here. Um, but uh, but yeah, for my point five, what we have. Uh, we had a question um, of nine here for the RMSE. So um, I don't know. So, but we should be able to to push it to something that that is underfitting. Um, I don't think one is enough on this case. So here, if you use zero, one, and two, uh, you might have still been into something that was still you know uh, uh, in interesting range. Let's try ten. I can't remember. Um, so so if we push it up to ten. Um, I mean, you know, obviously if we finally got the RMSE to not be very good. It's back up to that about the point three level like we would expect for an underfit. Um, and our curves here, we're not going to, unless I visualize this better. Um, oh, uh, yeah, but, um, uh, what happened here? Oh, there it is. So, um, so again, it might, you know, it doesn't look like it's actually uh, leveled off yet, so it might eventually get to somewhere uh, more interesting, but um, uh, we're only up to about the point three, or a little bit below the point three um, at, at this point. So, so this is probably definitely underfitting. Um, and you know, if we look at it here, it uh, won't be quite because we're not driving things to zero like we do for the other uh, type of regularization. But um, uh, it's, it's more line-like for most of the um, uh, the range of the function is trying to uh, predict here. So, um, So, uh, yeah, final thing. Um, 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 so again, it's not really easy to get. Like, like if you do zero uh, for the ridge, it's just the one that has even worse problems. Well, I guess it's, uh, ridge is okay with zero. Um, but yeah, you'll get uh, something that's probably overfit here. Uh, yeah, so, so zero. Uh, well, you know, of course, this should be the same as doing um, an overfit model. Uh, and it, this looks better than what you get for lasso if you just use zero alpha. So it looks like it's, it looks like it doesn't converge. Uh, and we end up with RMSE of, um, of um, 0 0.03, kind of like we have to be the model. And if we plot out the uh, function, uh, 
uh, visualize what it, what it actually looks like that we've just fit. Um, it's wiggly again, uh, like we would expect for an hour fit. Okay. So, um, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you didn't go through a complete process like that, that's kind of what I wanted you to, tr to be doing or, or to uh, um, uh, be figuring out in this assignment, right? So, and, and this is, you know, it's a little bit made up, but this is not atypical of what you would do for uh, an unknown data set uh, that you're trying to fit a regression to. Um, you'd, you'd want to do something like this. So, the, the, you know, you start off by giving, trying to get some idea of what bounds are, uh, and then you might uh, try to start getting a better fitting model by using some regularization. Uh, usually, it, it comes down to uh, boxing in. So you have to find an appropriate range and then search that uh, in order to optimize your fitness function or, or uh, what other criteria you might be uh, using um, um, for the model that you're fitting. So. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think I had a bunch of stuff in there that I tried by hand, just as some examples. Um, so, I, I, I probably won't be too tough on the discussion as long as it looks like it was consistent with what you were showing uh, in um, your, your steps two, three, four, and five. Um, and that you made an, an honest attempt to try and uh, discuss or evaluate the kind of things. But, but some of the stuff that if you were doing it right would be, you know, um, that, um, you know, the underfit uh, shows a range of about 0.31, um, um, which should give us nothing down. The overfit uh, tells us that maybe we can get down to around 0.04 or 0.05. For well fit models, so that's kind of about lower end. Uh, looking at some different ranges of lasso by hand, things close to zero but a little bit above uh, seem to be like they might be in the right range, or pretty small but not zero, 0 0.005, like that. Uh, uh, these will give you, though, uh, because of the way that lasso works, will give you models that keep about the, the first 20. Of the parameters, which isn't a real great estimate, the, the polynomial is only a degree six polynomial. So we only need seven parameters if you include the bias coefficient on there. Um, so yeah, you can get, you know, if you go and, and push it, you can, if you try and opt, if, if you knew that I needed more like 10 or seven or six, you can optimize. So, so yeah, like values of about uh, 0 0.05 or something. 0 0.01 will give you models that have more like 10 uh, uh, feet that keeps the, the first 10 uh, polynomial features. Um, um, okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, also, the people I look, uh, the, the ones I've looked at so far. Um, again, I would probably complain that uh, you, you know you weren't com maybe getting 100% getting the point here. So a, a common uh, error here was to do something like um, I, most everybody had something working correctly, so I probably won't take off uh, much or any points uh, for this. But uh, here we're just trying to illustrate using uh, the features of Scikit-Learn to more systematically do what I was kind of doing by hand there, right? So if alpha is the only thing that we're modifying, um, we've kind of gotten some bounds, you know, if we're using alpha for our last regularization, uh, but I want to more systematically search, you know, from zero to point one to see what's possible. And depending on how much compute power you have, you know, you do it. So here we're actually searching uh, from 10 to the minus 5, 
10 to the minus 15 to, to 10 to the zero, so actually for zero to one, uh, you know, for my by hand stuff, I might have drawn a point one, so I should, maybe should have used uh, minus one there, but that's fine. Um, but um, in this case, I didn't ask you to do this, um, although I, I, I hoped, I had at least one person wasn't really reporting very well um, what the best parameter was that ended up that they ended up getting right so when I search from this all the way down to 10 to the minus 15 um, we end up getting 8.8 uh, .8 times 10 to the minus 5 which is um, uh, you know so it's saying that the best RMSE uh, occurs at uh, point Four zeros and then uh, eight eight there. That's what the um, uh, that's what eight point eight times ten minus five is there, right? So uh, that was even smaller than uh, the one that I've shown here. Uh, although you know, again, this goes back to what I was talking a little bit about. We're we're really what Grid Search reports is the RMSE from doing a. Uh, uh, cross validation fold, however you specified it. So we're, we're comparing apples to oranges a little bit. It would have been better when I was doing this by hand to maybe do it the same thing that my grid switch is going to do and do like a cross validation um, uh, and get the RMSE from a, an average of a five fold cross validation or something. So, you know, so the best I had had before for the RMSE for Lasso was. We got about similar results though uh, here, 0.1248. So that, that was the best that I could get for this data set. Okay. But uh, some people, uh, so back to this, we're not using a big enough range. So, like if you use only go from 10 to the minus 4, um, and do a grid search over that. You will find that uh, da, 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 that the best parameter happens at ten to the minus four point zero 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 one. Okay, so people that did this and didn't recognize this, the, the problem with that is uh, you, your range isn't big enough. Uh, the, the the best it found was the the one of the ends that you specified. So that means that maybe something below that, smaller could do even better. We haven't done a really very good grid search in that case. Uh, so potentially the, the actual best uh, point uh, for the alpha on the space is below that. So anytime the best report is at, the, is at an endpoint of the grid that you specify, you should ex extend your range to go further down until you find something in between. You need to find a range that bounds your best value. Right. And if you don't, you really haven't exhaustively done your grid search there. So I'll probably mention that. I've, I've, uh, a couple of people already of the few that I've done weren't doing very well on, on uh, specifying a range there. All right. Um, so if we go all the way down, really close to, but not quite to zero. Um, for this data, I get that uh, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 5 ends up being uh, the best that we get uh, in terms of the uh, cross-validation for the root mean square error. Uh, that value there. Um, I didn't ask you to do this, but um, 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 it can help when you're doing grid searches like this to actually visualize uh, what it look what the performance looks like as a function of changing the parameter that you're grid searching over right so here all we're doing is plotting for all of the thousand um, all the thousand different points of alpha thousand different values of alpha that we tried over this range we just plot um, uh, the root mean squared error that the cross-validation came up with for all of them. All right. 
So you can see that there's not a whole lot of difference, uh, but it does end up minimizing down here. Uh, actually, at 10 to the minus 5. So, um, so if you zoom in on that from 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 2, you, you, you see the uh, result here. So, uh, this, I have to think about that. It doesn't, doesn't quite look right to me now that I'm looking at that. It looks like it's, uh, it looks like the minimum is maybe here, 10 to minus 4. So the values I might be plotting here are from the uh, original training versus the uh, uh, versus uh, like a, a final cross validation score. So, hmm. anyway, um, a mystery there. I should probably solve that. So some, something's not quite 100% right there. But, you know, the, the overall point does remain. I mean, you know, the, the, there is, you know, we have captured the range and somewhere around here, around here is, is where the alpha is doing the best for the lasso. So that seems to be the best that we can get is that about the 0.12, um, um, uh, which gives us parameters looking something like this uh, that get driven to zero and non-zero um, on a lasso regression here. So. Um, I also didn't ask you to do, but uh, if you were curious, um, it would certainly be easy to do the same thing. But for the uh, uh, the ridge regression, so if I do that, for me, I end up getting a. It tells me that the best alpha on ridge uh, for this set of data ends up being. close to the 0 0.01. I'm sorry, no, 0 0.12. So, um, uh, so bigger than the 0 0.01 I had uh, up there. Um, so that gives us a, uh, our MSA using the, uh, the, again, you know, we're comparing apples and oranges. So this is doing a, some kind of a cross-validation uh, fit. Uh, so it's not the, uh, not quite the same as what I was showing when I was doing it by hand here, um, but uh, that ends up giving us a 0 .07 uh, performance down there. So. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, you didn't have to do anything for this, but this should have run hopefully for everybody um, uh, that tried it. Uh, I, I think the, the, the final point on this is, um, you know, uh, the, the, the regularization is kind of a blunt tool, so it, it'll probably only get you so far. So the, the real power, if you need to build a model that performs maximally well on uh, generalizing, is you have to start doing some feature engineering. So you have to really go in there and understand your data. Um, and take what you have, but, but maybe recombine it um, or um, um, uh, do something with it so that uh, it more clearly uh, uh, removes the noise and allows you to, to find the signal in, in the model that you're trying to fit. In this made-up example, what that means is that there's really a, a, a true polynomial function that's driving the, the data that was generated. So if you get the degree of the polynomial model correct, you can get a much better fit than you can with uh, using regularization to try and bluntly get where you're at. Right? Uh, and it, if for this set of data I gave you, it very easily gets the true uh, degree of the polynomial. So we end up with a degree six polynomial. Um, Actually, this is the degree zero, this is the bias term, and then power one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, you'll also notice, if you go back and remember, you know, so these two things were zeroed out, um, and, you know, it was basically two, two, negative two, negative one, negative one. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I showed it right there. So two, 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 zero, uh, negative two. So the, the point is, is that, you know, uh, by getting at the right set of features that we optimize, um, um, we're, we're really getting uh, down to being close to discovering the true function uh, 
that happens here. Right? So uh, what this gives you um, um, on the the fivefold cross validation gives you 0 0.05, uh, which is better than than we got with the last one, the rig or, or the ridge using the uh, grid search, um, and you know. You can obviously see how nice it looks as a fit um, if we're focusing in only on the actual parameters of the of the function that generated our data that we're trying to model here. Okay, um, yeah, I still have five more minutes, uh, but uh, yeah, just come kind of some of the things. I really think this is a very useful assignment, you know, so um, if you weren't getting some or all that stuff, go back and think about it, maybe read the, the discussion. Uh, to me, this is this is kind of very helpful just on for real machine learning kind of problems to understand the relationship between, you know, so th this gives a kind of practice for, you can see what the true function is. In a real world, you wouldn't know what the true function is, but you have to do similar processes to try and discover it. Uh, if, you're, if you're trying to model a set of data, if it's a set of data. All right. Uh, yeah, so final chance back to the test. Anybody have any questions on the test? Um, things I can clarify at this point? I, I will. I mean, I'm going to open it up Thursday after class. I'll give one final chance on class. I don't know if we'll have, we'll have take too much time on Thursday, uh, depending on if anybody wants to ask any final questions. So I haven't put it up yet, uh, but it will be in the form of a two-hour timed test uh, that once you start it, you'll be able to download. You'll be able to get the questions in MyLeo online. You'll be expected to answer those questions as Python functions or other Python code in a Python notebook, and then uh, attach the notebook to the test when you're done within that two-hour time limit to submit your work. You have, it'll just be on D2L. So you don't technically have to be here on Thursday to take the test. It won't be in class or anything. It'll be open Thursday after class till Friday afternoon or something for you to attempt. All right.